Hello, it's me, and today I wanna show you how you can quickly set up Vroid, and on some next episodes I can show you how you can customize your avatar on Blender, and how you can set up a small filmmaking studio on Unity. But I'm warning you, I'm still a noob level so I may make mistakes on these videos, but I do spend lots of time daily learning, so hopefully I'll be fine pretty soon. Anywho, let's get started! First off, the recommended way to get Vroid is directly from Steam. It works flawlessly with Proton Layer, and you get auto updates and all those. The experience is much alike to Windows, at least to my knowledge. But if you don't want, or if you can't use Steam for whatever reason, your next best choice is definitely Bottles. So, this is Bottles, and it basically is a front end for Wine. The way Bottles works is by creating Bottles, and each Bottle is basically a runtime environment with different configuration. For example here I have two Bottles, Windows 10 that is my main, and Soda that is mostly for testing. And inside Windows 10 I have installed a few games, all acquired rightfully. Speaking of which, let's acquire Vroid Studio maybe? So you go on vroid.com, and you just need to download the Windows client. One thing to know before though, is that there are two Vroid versions. The stable and the beta. The naming is kinda confusing, but the stable is actually the new Vroid Studio and comes with updated features and new parameters. In short, you want the stable version. So, click on Windows to get it and we get an exe installation file. Back to bottles, and by the way you can get it from Flathub. And anyway, we are ready to create a new bottle, pretending that was our first. Gonna call it Vroid, but keep in mind is not a good idea to create different bottles for every app. So next I'm gonna set this as an application. Not like it matters much, it will just use a bit different presets that we can change anyway. Okay. And create. Oh, the first time you will do that it will take some time, because it will need to download a hell lots of stuff, like the actual wine engine. But I have everything already, so let's close this and continue. So, entering to Vroid. And the first thing we want is to go to Preferences. And Components. Note this is a drop down menu, could get a bit confusing and miss it. Anyway, here you want to change the runner, that by default is Soda. You want to change that to Proton, but I'm not entirely sure, and perhaps you should experiment with different runners. In fact, Bottles will throw a message that is better to use the Wine Runner, because Proton contains patches that are very specific to Steam. Of course as every other warning it will be ignored, and we'll just keep rocking. Oh, and if you don't have the Proton as an option, that's because you first need to download it from the runner's panel. Remember those runners are quite big. A gigabyte or so, so don't abuse them. Okay, that's done, so we can now go to details to install Vroid. Meanwhile that still says we're using the soda runner, but it just hasn't been updated correctly. Better now? So, next we only need to run the executable. Select it. And run. Windows installer appears, and we should comply. Now we have the option to directly launch it from here, but I will close this and we'll start it from bottles. So that's not a portable exe, we had a normal installation before, so we'll find it under programs. Also, this menu will give us some extra options, like running it on terminal that is useful for debugging. And from here we can remove it too. Anyway, let's run it on a default configuration. And the black window is a Wayland artifact, but whatever. Get started! Agree! Some beginner's guides, never read them. Now, the first thing you may want to do, is to go up here. In settings. And set the dark theme. And also improve your model's preview quality. On Studio we have already 3 models we can use, or we can create a new one. But I'm not gonna showcase the editor, instead I will load my existing model just to make sure it works. A nice thing about the file manager, is that it gives us access to the root folder. 
so it is a good practice to save outside of Flatpak destination, because it will be much more convenient to find your files later. Like when you want to import them on different applications, or export them back. So, here I am, in some sense anyway. Not going to deal with the editor on this video, but for testing things out, I will only change my outfit. Hmm? And I think I will go for the school uniform. Your dreams will finally come true, again. Oh, one thing I definitely noticed is that Bottles V-Roid is significantly less responsive from the Steam V-Roid. I guess it has to do with this warning before, about the Proton runtime compatibility. Anywho, we are almost there. A last thing I want to show you is the save and the export options. And I'm going to start with the save for explaining the difference. So when we save, we save a file in a .vroid format. But when we export, we export a .vrm file, which is basically the format we'll import later on Blender or Unity. And those not responding dialogues? It is some GNOME shell issue under Wayland, and it happens even on some native apps, nothing to do with bottles. Anyway, export, and I will leave the default materials and bones normalization options. That's some package information to complete, like the model name and version, or the license and permissions, mostly useful when we share. And again we have this little Windows Files dialog, and just remember to save outside the Flatpak destination. So that was pretty much everything for now, but perhaps I will do some actual VR guides in the short future. But from this point and beyond you can quickly do a few more things. For one you can import the VRM file to Blender, and do some additional modeling or animations there, or even create 3D accessories that you can import back to VRoid. For that, you can use Cat's plugin, and I will leave a link on description. However Blender 3 is not really supported yet, so not the full functionality will work correctly. The other thing you can do, is to import your model directly to Unity. For that, you will need the Uni VRM package, and I will put a link to YouTube description. Something very important, is that you really really need to use the URP pipeline, and that's for getting better stylized graphics and hugely improved performance. Unfortunately the current Uni VRM package doesn't support the scriptable render shaders yet, so it needs some extra work. But that's perhaps a video for another time. 